the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to our family and friends worshiping with us in person on Facebook Live and our official YouTube channel. We bring you greetings from the Bethel Community Church right here in the beautiful city of Fairfield, California. Our pastor is Anthony Gilmore. For those of you who would like to send cards, prayer requests, or words of encouragement, our mailing address is 600 East Tabor Avenue, Fairfield, California, 94533. If you would like to send donations, you can use Givelify, Venmo, or the Cash App. We want to thank you for worshiping with us each week and supporting this ministry. We are here to bring you hope, peace, and joy. We are glad you are here in the building and at home watching, and we praise God for technology. So let's all praise him for all he's done and worship him for who he is. Oh! 
Enough right there to make you all to shout in this place. Just to be in your right mind this morning. Just to know that he brought you from danger seen and unseen. You ought to be giving God some praise that you made it to the church parking lot. Say that you weren't in an accident this morning. And guess what? You woke up this morning. Oh, y'all, you just, you playing with it. You ought to think because you woke up this morning. Guess what? Somebody was on that cooling board this morning. Somebody didn't have an opportunity to get it right with the Lord. But you got another opportunity just to say thank you. Just to say thank you. Just to say thank you. God, we honor you. Hey. For this is the day, ah, yeah, that you made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for another opportunity just to say thank you. Now, God, we ask you to have your way in this place today. In the name of Jesus, move up and down the aisles today. Touch the ears of your people today. Touch the hearts of your people today. That they will be receptive to receive your word. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. Have your way in this place. Hollow is your name. We glorify you. We exalt you. We magnify you. For you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the great I am. You are the everlasting Father. You are the first and the last. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the ending. And we want to say thank you. Thank you. Oh God. Have your way. That healing will go forth. That deliverance will go forth. That salvation will go forth. In Jesus' name. Now touch the man of God. That's going to preach your word. Give him an anointing. 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 Him an anointing. That yokes will be destroy today yeah, 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 yeah. in Jesus name have your way have your way we expect miracles today in Jesus name have your way have your way ah have your way have your way ah have your way have your way. Loose your people. Loose your people. In Jesus' name, we declare, we decree that every need is met. It is said, and it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you're in agreement with it, Stand on your feet and give God some praise today. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Let go and let God. For the Lord! 
behalf of my pastor, the Reverend A.L. Gilmore and First Lady Gilmore, and the entire BCC family, we so glad that you stopped by here on your way to heaven, where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless each and every one of you.
will never, it'll never lose its power. Because it reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, oh, oh. Fancy. 
It don't have to be prolific. It don't have to be all that. He, he's just a deliverer. It's real simple. The Lord is, right? How many agree that the Lord just is? I said he just is. He's all that you need. He's a healer. He's a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a lawyer in a courtroom, a doctor in the sick room, a mother if you're motherless, a father if you're fatherless. When your child is going crazy, he's that comforter. He's everything that you need. And what we have to do is learn how to trust him, give it to him, and don't take it back. And most of all, watch him work. I said, watch God work. Because he'll work it out if you just let him. He'll work it out. I don't know nobody in here. I believe everybody in here wants something good for somebody else. I don't believe anybody in here wants to see anybody go through bad times. But guess what? God still is. He always will be. He's never failing. He's never failed us yet. And so we want to ask him a question. What is this? What is this that I feel? Deep down inside, what is this that keeps setting my soul on fire? Whatever it is, it won't let me, it won't let me hold my peace. Come on, choir. It keeps setting my soul on fire. Whatever it is, 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 it won't let me hold my peace. What is this? What is this? All right, come on, Sabrina. Got me acting kind of strange. What is this? What is this? It makes me want to run on in Jesus' name. Whatever it is. 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 Oh, it won't let me hold. Hold my peace. I said it makes me love all my enemies. And it won't let me be afraid to tell the world I've been born again. Yeah, what is this? Makes me do right when I want to do wrong. What is this? When I'm down low, it gives me a song. Whatever it is.
In all the earth, there's nobody like Jesus. I searched all over. Jesus. Excellent, excellent. Do you know he's excellent? Do you know it? Oh, Jesus. Excellent. Jesus. My elder brother. My best friend. <laughs> my grandmama's walking cane. Jesus. <laughs> I searched all over, couldn't find nobody like him. He's excellent. When my back is against the wall. <laughs> Yeah. 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 He's excellent. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Excellent. He is excellent today. He is excellent. I don't know how you feel about it, but he's excellent. And you know what I found out? <laughs> God is the joy and the strength of my life. Anybody know what I'm saying? <laughs> God is the joy. He takes all pain, misery, and strife. I don't know about you, but he's just my all. Is he your all in all? Come on, don't fool me. God is the joy. Those of you that know it, help us. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised, he promised to keep me. me. Never, never to leave me. He never, never comes short of his I got to fast and, and pray. Fast and pray. Don't, not too fast, not too fast. And keep my life clean. And keep my life clean. Every day, Every day, I want to go, I want to go with, and he comes back, he comes back. I've come too far, I've come too far, and I'll never turn back. God is, God is, God is, God is, God is. God is. God is. to keep me never he to never, leave never, me. never 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 come short, come short of I've, got I've got to fast stay in the narrow way, way and keep my life, keep my life clean, clean every day, every day. I, wanna I want to go with him 
when he comes back, when he comes back, I've come too far, I've come too far, and I'll never, and I'll never turn back. God is, God is, oh, 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 oh. God. Give the Lord a hand of praise today. He is my all in all. God, our Father, we come now with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for another Sunday morning, another worship opportunity. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for bringing us together one more time. Thank you for being our all in all. Thank you for being God. Thank you for saving us. You looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. Thank you. Thank you. As we look at your word, God, we pray that you would hide us behind the cross. Think with my mind. Speak with my mouth. Don't let me say the wrong words. Bless this waiting congregation. Look on those who are watching virtually. Holy Spirit, we petition you right now. Send your anointing in this room. Look on us now in Jesus' name. Forgive us of all of our sins, sins of omission sins of commission, blot out our transgressions. For your word says that we've all sinned and come short of your glory. But because of what you did at Calvary, we have a right to the tree of life. And so we say thank you today. Thank you for being our all in all. Thank you. God is my all. Amen. And all. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. How good the Lord really is. Standing all over the room, standing all over the room today. Turning your thoughts today to the book of Colossians. Colossians, good to see all of our visitors today. We thank God that you have come to share with us today Colossians that's right after the book of Philippians and the New Testament Colossians Paul writes to the church at Colossae Colossians chapter 1 we're going to look at verse number 9 I would that three people would read just verse number 9 for us loud Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. 
bless you. Bless you. Thank you for reading today. I want to use for a subject today, if it pleases our Christ, fill my cup. Fill my cup. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with knowledge. To ask that you may be filled with knowledge. To ask that you may be filled with knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of his will in all understanding and spiritual understanding. Fill my cup. The question is today, do you want to be filled? Fill my cup. Fact about it, let it over flow. Fill my cup. I have discovered that life is amazing. Brother Tiny, life is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Brother Mixon, uh, as you look at life uh, and how fast things have changed, are y'all in here today? I, I, I'm a child of the 70s, 60s, 70s, and in just my few years, Brother Powell, that I've lived, I've watched technology change our lives. I've watched technology, Sister Irving, change the way we live. Technology, Brother Lorenzo, has made it so that uh, pretty soon you won't have to leave home if you don't want to. Why do I say that? Well, you can order food and have it delivered, but you can go and have groceries delivered. You can, you, you can have one soda bottle delivered. To, you can have medicine delivered. You can uh, 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 have whatever you want just about brought to your home. Life is amazing, and I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed, Sabrina, at how uh, uh, plain old ordinary things have changed through the years. Okay, you look like you doubt me. Well, let's look at it. TV has gone from just channel two. Anybody remember it was two? Four, five, seven, and maybe 44 if you lived in a certain neighborhood. TV, TV. So Sister Evans has gone from just ABC, CBS, NBC, to, and PBS. Now you got over 500 channels and a bunch of apps on the TV. You got Hulu, YouTube TV, Roku, Netflix, and some more. Times have changed. Are y'all in here? Uh, 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 we've gone from uh, just black and white. Uh, y'all don't remember. I don't know how you grew up, but Sister Ruby, we lived in a house where we had one TV. And it had rabbit ears on the back. And Brother Robinson, God forbid, if the antenna got broke, you know what you did. You just went in the kitchen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I didn't grow up with no pantry. We just went in the cabinet. Are y'all in here? Uh, and got some, grandma called it aluminum foil. And, you know, Keith, you take some aluminum foil. <laughs> Times are different now. Radio has gone from uh, KDIA and KSOL and KRE. Okay, y'all act like you don't know. It's gone, Kyla, from just playing music and news and sports. And now you got talk shows and XM radio and podcasts. Everything has changed. What do you mean? Well, uh, clothing has changed for some of us, some of us, some of us. Uh, some of us no longer wear certain kind of clothes. Uh, Brother Manny 
uh, uh, some of us no longer wear bell bottoms and platforms and hot pants. Some of, some of us, some of us. Music has changed, Reverend Coleman. Uh, it, it ain't no more, it ain't about Johnny Taylor really no more. B.B. King, that, that, that's kind of out, are y'all in here? Nowadays it's her and Drake and Rihanna and Kendrick Lamar. Okay, y'all holy, y'all don't know. Now it's about, uh, uh, what's the guy, uh, uh, 21 Savage. Okay, I'm by myself. Cars have changed, Reverend Johnson. Uh, 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 we've gone from gas to hybrid, and now we get an electric. We can just plug it up. Are y'all with me? Telephones have changed. It's from the house phone that you drug down the hallway uh, to the closet or up under your pillow. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, come on, y'all. You remember. Uh, it's changed. Now, we went from house phones to flip phones, and now we got phones on our watch. Sister Malbro, times have changed. Reverend Lambert, grocery stores have changed. Uh, it ain't no more luckies. It ain't no more alpha beta. Are y'all in here? Ain't no more uh, 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 certain. It ain't no more white front and AIG. Okay, I got a bunch of young folk today, but now we got Trader Joe's and Whole Foods and uh, Sprouts. Banking has changed. No longer do you go inside and get in the line unless you got some real business to handle. But now it's all about uh, the, the, the ATM machine or your phone app. Are y'all with me? Uh, all I'm really saying is that times have changed. But the one thing, the one thing I've discovered, Sister Lee, that has not changed is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things are changing all around us, but it's the same gospel that saved Grandmama then. It's the same gospel that saved Mama Nim. Are y'all in here? It's the same gospel, Sister Wallace, that saved a wretch like me. Same gospel that saved you. But, 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 but the gospel can be undermined by false philosophy and false teaching in this modern day in which we live. And that's why y'all got to be careful about these YouTube philosophers that y'all follow. Folk talking all kind of junk, and you just listening to all kind of stuff. But the world today, uh, uh, in this world we live in today, Reverend Clark, the gospel is being undermined like never before. And in some cases, it's, it's become, so to see, what I call a watered-down gospel. And, uh, 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 and it's a weak shadow of the power that it once contained. Okay, what do I mean? Well, uh, Sister Hall, our doctrines are all jacked up. Our beliefs are all mumbled and jumbled. And now Christians talk about they burning sage in their house. The devil is alive. I knew I was going to get to it. I just didn't know when. Uh, 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 our teachings are many times empty nowadays. Our, our proclamation is powerless. Our information is lacking. And I'm amused. I'm amused uh, to our preachers. I'm amused by what a lot of us pass off as theology, which is really nothing more than a lot of gravy with no meat underneath. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't never took a, a bowl and just filled it up with gravy and just ate the gravy. And I love gravy. But when I eat gravy, Brother Archie, I want some meat or some rice or something. A lot of what is passed around in the Christian community is nothing more than an empty representation of theology. And you know, a lot of our modern-day preachers are just motivationally speaking now. 
telling you you're going to win and you're going to have money and the sky is bright and the, uh, tomorrow is a better day. The devil is alive. Preach the word of God. It tells us to be instant in season and out of season. And uh, 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 the name it and claim it, you know, the blab it and grab it uh, crowd, they always gravitate to catchy phrases. So-called, everybody talking about they want to rhyme a word and a, a fresh revelation. Well, I've come to suggest to you uh, that you don't need a new spiritual experience. He's the same yesterday, the same today, and forevermore. No, 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 no. You don't need a new spiritual experience. You need to grow in that that you've already received. And that's, that's the thesis of this text today, Reverend Reuben. Uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to this church in Colossae and uh, he writes, after hearing the good news and the bad news about this congregation. Are y'all in here? The good news is that Epaphras, a Colossian, and one of the founding pillars of the church has all uh, told him they already have great faith and great love. The bad news is that he's also told him that false philosophy has threatened to undermine their faith. Uh, and so, Brother Will, they have great faith, which is spirit. Uh, 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 they've got great love, which is in their heart. Uh, uh, however, they got a head problem. They got a head problem, they got a mind problem, and they got an intelligence problem. And so Paul has written... Uh, He's written this letter which could be carried to the church and, 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 and it's carried to a church that has been demagnetized by what's known as Gnostics. Are y'all in here? They have infiltrated the church, uh, Sister Hamilton, and they have spread their version of the gospel which says that we have superior knowledge. You know, like some of our modern day Folks, Donnie, you know, uh, we're smart. <laughs> we don't need the Word of God. We already know right from wrong. And so, in this text today, Sister Coleman, they pray on the seasoned saints, and they make meals uh, of the new converts. And in other words, false teachers uh, uh, have risen up with their claims to have superior knowledge. Matter of fact, they started what I call super clicks. Are y'all in here? Uh, they carried a mantra of you would be in the know, uh, a part of the hip crowd, a part of the highly spiritual, if you accept these new doctrines. Are y'all with me? My brothers and sisters, I'm not looking uh, for a new doctrine. No, uh, the Apostle Paul writes because he understood that all truth was objective. I wish y'all could hear me today. That truth is fixed and revealed infallibly through the Word of God. I don't know about you, but it's fixed. <laughs> uh, uh, truth requires study. Are y'all in here? S truth requires diligence. Truth requires understanding over your feelings. Y'all ain't with me. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe the reason why new doctrines can invade some churches is uh, 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 when the priority of the church is on everything but God's Word. What do you mean? Well, I've noticed that when a church focuses on anything else besides the Word of God, that's a recipe for disaster. But when the Word of God is taught... <laughs> And when the word of God is proclaimed, the church demonstrates its appreciation for sound doctrine by attendance. Okay, y'all didn't like that. I'm going to say it again. Uh, uh, when the word is taught, uh, the church demonstrates its appreciation for sound doctrine by its attendance. I ain't getting a lot of help today. 
knew I was going to get to it. I just didn't know when. And so, Bernice, I don't know when COVID started, but it, and, and I wonder why in two, almost three years of, of, of online, uh, on the phone, Bible study chats and uh, Sunday school, I wonder why there are some preachers who have never dialed in one time on a Tuesday night. Okay, y'all don't like this kind of preacher. Don't, 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 uh, uh, don't beat up the preachers, because I wonder why some deacons ain't never been on the line. <sighs> Get my keys and <laughs> start my car. I got to go. Uh, uh, you might say, well, I, I work on Tuesday, well, Sunday morning. You work all the time. Well, I wonder why some ushers have never dialed in, have never called. I wonder why some young people have never got on the phone. And you can't blame me as the pastor for wondering. I mean, it's only right to wonder where folk are. When you don't come to church, I call to check on you. I wonder why you ain't on the line. And I wonder why some leaders ain't never made it to Sunday school. But I don't wonder <laughs> why some people are constantly being defeated by the devil. No, no, I don't wonder. I don't wonder why some people never pay their honest tithe. I'm in trouble today. I, I don't wonder why some people are not sound in their doctrine. I don't have to wonder. No, I don't wonder why some people have no hope. I don't wonder why some Christians are powerless when it comes to prayer and getting a prayer through. I don't wonder, no, no, I don't wonder why some people can't get a prayer through. Come back next Sunday, I might not be fussing. I don't wonder why, Mr. Robertson, some people are mean as rattlesnakes. And all the rattlesnake folk ain't absent today. It's some here today. I don't wonder why. I don't wonder why some people get quiet in church but loud everywhere else. Deacon Reuben, come get my car keys and start the car and pull it up to the door because I'm going to have to run. I don't wonder why some people don't hurry to get to church by 11 o'clock. I don't have to wonder. No, I don't have to wonder why some people never move or show a sign. Some people never wave their hand during a work. Some people never pat their I don't have to wonder. The same Bible says you know a tree. By the fruit it bears. If the Word of God really meant something to us as a church body, we would make a concentrated, consecrated effort to be here every time the Word goes forth. It just seems to me. It just seems to me that if the Word of God really meant something to us, Sunday school would be jam-packed. Tuesday night, <laughs> we'd have overflowing numbers. If the Word of God, okay, I ain't getting no help today. If the Word of God really meant something to us, we would not be able to accommodate our Sunday morning crowd. If the Word of God really meant something to us, we would be there every time the Word went forth. If the Word Sister Judy of God meant something to us. We would bring our Bible to church. If the word really meant something, we would lay aside our personal agendas and our, uh, we would resign from the church clique. We would, oh, y'all ain't with me. We would forget foolishness and repudiate ridiculousness and find ourselves happy in the Word of God. And he likes to borrow 
Christian vocabulary, the devil, you do know that he's a dirty fighter. Reverend Evans, he hits you below the belt when you ain't looking. He likes to borrow church phrases, but not the Christian dictionary. The devil, y'all, I don't talk about him much, but he'll make stuff sound so spiritual that somebody who is not in the Word will find themselves repeating his cute, catchy phrases rather than quoting the Word of God. Folks start hollering about, I'm covered by the blood. You'll start hollering, I'm just anointed. Okay. You'll start thinking, I'm more spiritual than you are. Uh, you'll start hollering, you know, the Bible says where there are two or three gathered together uh, without the understanding that the Scripture refers to the redeeming fellowship, not the lack of attendance. I ain't getting a lot of help today. So let me get back to Paul because y'all get mad at me. But the Apostle Paul appeals to our minds over and over and over again. That has been the mission of Brother Paul, not just to this particular church body, but to the body of Christ at large. There's nothing mean or stingy about his motives. You do know that he says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He says to be renewed in spirit of your mind. He says, set your mind on things above. Uh, in order to understand this principle today, uh, there's three points that are necessary, and I may not get to all of them today, but come back next Sunday and I'll finish this, but uh, he says that if it's really all about Jesus, Paul says, I pray for you on a daily basis, and he says, I'm praying for you in this area. First of all, Paul, what are you praying, brother pastor? What are you praying? Well, my prayer is that you might be filled <laughs> Paul describes his hope for uh, the church, for the children of God. He says, I pray that you will not become empty vessels or half-filled vessels. I pray that your cup would overflow. And Reverend Clark, that's my daily prayer for every member of Bethel Community Church. Lord, let their cups overflow. In other words, I want y'all to be complete. Many of us shy away uh, from being described as being full in the Spirit. But he says in this context that you would be complete in Christ. You will be full. You'll be fully equipped. I wish y'all could hear me. In Christ, uh, we know God, His Spirit, His truth his revelation, and his power. But Paul says we need to be full. We need to have, in New Testament language, uh, we need to be controlled by the Spirit. This word uh, also suggests, Sister Yolanda, that you are so filled to the brink that other substances can't get in your cup. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, let me ask you all today, what are you full of? You fill in the blank. If you're filled with anger, you're going to be controlled by anger. If you're filled with lust, you're going to be controlled by lust. If you're filled with drugs, you go, ah. If you're filled with alcohol, you're going to be controlled by alcohol. If you're filled with demons, you're going to be controlled by demons. I don't know why Deacon Reuben won't come get my key and go start my car, because i got to get out of here. I'm in trouble, Deacon Reuben. You told me you had my back. If you are filled.
around with gossip, you're going to be controlled by gossip. If you're filled with lies, you're going to be controlled by lying. <laughs> Grandma didn't know the word, but she said if you're filled with mess, you're going to be controlled by mess. If you're filled with knowledge, you'll be controlled by knowledge. It's 1221. I got to hunk this off y'all and get out of here. But Paul says uh, we need to forsake the Gnostics. Uh, you need to forsake false teaching. You need to get rid of fake, phony, fraudulent doctrines that are popping up on every hand. You don't need to burn no saints. Get down on your knees. Have a little talk. He says, <laughs> you will be filled with precise and correct knowledge. And so my prayer for you, church family, I just want us to be better. I'm not trying to mess with nobody. I ain't trying to bowl down your alley. <laughs> but my prayer is that you would have the correct knowledge of the Word of God. My brothers and sisters, no matter how old you get, uh, you will never exhaust the riches of the Word of God. And it oftentimes amazes me that in every church, there's always somebody that says, I don't need to go to Bible study. I don't need to read my Bible uh, because I know everything I need to know. Again, let me suggest to you, you will never know it all. I don't care if you read the Bible every day and go to every church meeting, every convention, every conference, every institute. You will never glean everything there is to glean from the Word of God. I got to get out of here really this time, y'all. Uh, what I'm really trying to suggest to us as a church family today, uh, full knowledge of God is not shackling. But when you know and have the full knowledge of God, you are liberated. Uh, when you have the Word of God, you can walk in victory. You don't have to walk around with your head down, but you can walk with your head up and your shoulders squared, knowing that the Lord is a very present help in the time of trouble. Uh, because of my knowledge, uh, preachers, I can preach with power. I can preach with authority and conviction. Uh, singers, you ought to be able to sing with conviction. Uh, you ought to be able to pray with relationship. Lord, deliver me from people that pray and have no relationship with you. Lord, I got to get out of here. Uh, I can have hope with knowledge. Are y'all in here? Uh, when you know God's word, you can leap out in faith. Uh, you can smile uh, when people say mean things against you. I don't know about y'all, but I can rejoice when others speak evil of me. Uh, I can dance uh, when people around me are sad. Uh, I thank God, y'all, that I, 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 I moved from one perch to another perch. Uh, I moved from I heard about God. I moved to I know God is good. I heard he was a way maker. But I really didn't know he was a way maker till my back got against the wall. I heard, y'all ain't in here, that he would put food on my table. But I had never really been hungry. But now that I done tried him. I can say without a shadow of a doubt that he'll be bread when you get hungry. Is there anybody here that can say I heard 
I heard that he was a way maker, but now, now I know, I know, I know, I heard. That's enough. That's that's enough. I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard that he would heal your body, but I had never been sick. But now, that's enough. Now that I've been sick, anybody been sick, won't he heal your body? Won't he heal you? Won't he, will he, will he, won't he? I got to quit, I got to quit. Fill my cup. Let it overflow. Fill my cup. As we stand all over the building. If the Lord say the same, I'll fill my cup. Part two, next Sunday. As we extend the invitation now. Maybe someone is here without a church home. Maybe you're here today and you want to belong to church. You drifted away. The Lord never leaves us. We leave him. If you're here today, and maybe you've never accepted him as your personal savior. Maybe you don't know him in the pardon of your sin. You've never been baptized. This is an opportunity for you to get it right. If you're here today, maybe you love the Lord, maybe you're saved, but you don't have a church home, drifted away from your church. My hand represents his hand, and I wouldn't go home the same way I came. You might say, preacher, I'm saved, I love God, I love the Lord, but I don't have a church family, I don't have a pastor. Every Christian needs a church home because you're like a fish out of water. And you know what happens to fish out of water. You can't survive very long by yourself. We offer Christ. If you're here today and you don't know why your cup just ain't overflowing anymore. Your cup just don't feel full. Maybe you have to get your relationship right with God. And you can't get your right relationship right with God if your right relationship ain't right with your fellow man. Amen. Amen, Pastor. You're right. If you're here to cry, we offer Christ to you, my brother, my sister. I wouldn't go home the same way I came. We offer Christ. We offer Christ to you, my sister. Offer Christ to you, oh my brother. He will give you a brand new life. offer Christ. If anybody is here that did not receive your Holy Communion when you came in, just hold your hand up and our deacons will serve you. Just hold your hand up. They're coming. Come on, brother deacons. They're holding their hands up down front over here. There's some people that missed theirs. up if you didn't receive your communion. 
Eternal God and our Father, we come first of all, Lord, to say thank you for another day. Another day that I'm glad about, oh God. We ask now that you would bless this table, oh God. Bless these elements that uh, represent your body and your blood, oh God. We ask that you would bless it and bless those that have come today to receive your communion. It is in the name of Jesus that we thank you and we all pray and say amen. The Bible says when the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup which is poured out of you is the new covenant in my blood. Behold, the hand of the one who is betraying me is with mine on the table. For indeed, the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to the man by whom he is betrayed. The devil is alive. Keep going, Reverend. Just keep keep reading, Reverend. Keep reading. Keep my, reading. My, my, my. This is, as we have in our hands here, the bread um, which represents Jesus' body, which was broken for us. Shall we commune together? Likewise, this is the blood that represents the blood that was shed for each and every one of us shall we commune together. Then they sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost. He died. He died on the cross. I know it was. 
haven't dismissed yet. We have not dismissed yet. We're still on air. We're still on air. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. good the Lord really is as we prepare our hearts for the benediction as we prepare for the benediction let me remind us all of our giving today is the first Sunday church family everybody say first Sunday everybody say first Sunday how good the Lord really is thank you now, you have heard me for the last few Sundays reminding us of our giving, but my reminding is not working. <laughs> I need us all to do our part. I need us all to do our part in order to do ministry. It takes all of our resources. Are y'all hearing me? The Bible says the liberal soul shall be made fat. Thank you. I've discovered that some people want more, but they can't have more because they don't give. A closed hand, nothing can get in it, <laughs> nothing can get out of it. Running down to that church, giving that preacher all your money. That's what they say. I never ask you to do something I don't do myself. I think it's a poor leader that does that. You can't lead where you don't go, and you can't teach what you don't know. So I'm asking everyone today, do your part. Many of our many of our consistent givers, I want you to know how much we appreciate your continued support. Many of our n inconsistent givers, I need you to get back on board. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm still on air, and I'm saying this. I don't usually say this, th these things on the air. But church family, I need your support today. I don't believe in blessed rabbit feet, and broke mirrors, and black cats. I don't believe in good luck. But I do believe what thus saith the Lord. And the word of God is, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. I will not open you windows of heaven and pour you out blessings. There should not be room enough to receive. And so, yes, even after preaching that kind of message, <laughs> I need your help. Deacon Reuben wouldn't come get my key and start my car and bring it around. <laughs> so I'm in trouble. But I need your help today. Church family, don't let me down. Today is the first Sunday, and you all know what our obligations are. So I'm asking everyone to do your part. Amen. I don't believe in $100 lines and special lines. Let's just give and take care of our responsibility. Is that all right? Amen. I need your help today. I need your help. Now, when things change, don't say I didn't tell you. <laughs> don't say I didn't mention it. <laughs> but I need your help, and I know you're not going to let us down. So on your way out, our deacons are there at the door with the baskets. If you would like to give in person, you can do that. Some of you give online. Use the Givelify or the Cash App or the Venmo. But I need your support today. Our first Sunday obligations are due, and it's going to take all of us doing our part. Amen. Sister Kelly is going to come to all of our visitors. I feel that I voice the sentiment of our church family at large when I say to you, don't make this the last time. Come back and worship with us again. Sister Kelly is going to come, and then we'll be ready for the benediction. To all of our worshipers, we want to thank you for being with us today. This morning, Pastor Gilmore spoke from Colossians, the first chapter, the ninth verse. Fill my cup. 
Our prayer is that you've been blessed by our service today. Stay close to us as we stay close to you. And please visit our Facebook page for further worship opportunities or visit our BCC app. Search for Bethel Church in the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. Please join us for our conference call and chat with Pastor G on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Also on the first and third Wednesday of the month from 9 to 10.30 a.m., BCC hosts a food giveaway. Also on the first and third Thursdays of the month, Faith Over Fear meets at 7 p.m. On this Tuesday, March 7th, marks the 31st wedding anniversary for our pastor and his bride. If you would like to gift our pastor and first lady $31, that's a dollar for each year they've been married, uh, you can use the Givelify, or right after service, there will be cake and ice cream in the chandelier room. Amen? In-person Sunday school resumed this morning. Amen. Sunday school is available for children, youth, and adults. Sunday school starts at 10 a.m. There also will be a call-in for those who cannot attend in person. If you attend in person, please come through the back, the rear of the campus. Amen. To attend Sunday school, the sanctuary will be locked until church starts. Please join Pastor Gilmore on Sunday, March 19th at 3 p.m. as he preaches at True Fellowship Baptist Church for Pastor Anthony Moore and First Lady Lisa Moore's Pastor and Wife Appreciation. The address is 1213 Fred Jackson Way in Richmond. On March 25th, from 11 to 1 p.m., Mayor Catherine Moy and Vice Mayor Pam Bertani will have a listening tour community meeting here in the sanctuary. The Cancer Awareness Ministry will have a Cancer Survivors Breakfast on Saturday, March 18th. This will be a continental breakfast. Please come out to hear testimonies from survivors and feel free to share your story. On April 16th and April 23rd is the 14th church anniversary our anniversary. <laughs> Dr. Gregory Payton and the Greater St. John Greater St. John Missionary Baptist Church will worship with us on April 16th and Pastor Michael Wallace and the Mount Zion Baptist Church from Oakland will worship with us on April 23rd. Dinner will be served on both days. We're asking our members for $10 for each of the 14 years. That's $140. For your friends and family who do not have Facebook, please tell them this service will be posted to our official YouTube channel. Simply search for Bethel Community Church of Fairfield and subscribe to our channel. A great big thanks to all of you. You are so very nice. With sincere appreciation, God bless, with godly love, the family of Mother Barbara Beck and Sister LaShawn Beck King. Blessings from the church house to your house. On behalf of our entire church, we welcome you to always worship at the Five Star Church, Bethel Community Church of Fairfield. Stay prayerful, stay in the word, and stay safe. Come on, Reverend Reuben, if you would give us our benediction and we'll be ready to go. Shall we stand all over the building? Now, let's all say amen. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present you faultless in the presence of his glory. To the extreme wise God, be glory, majesty, and dominion now henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say amen. 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 Thank God.